Of course, we must start with the Apostles, St. Peter and St. Paul. St. Irenaeus, writing in the 2nd century, tells us that they founded and organised the Church of Rome. St. Peter was executed outside the boundaries of Rome on the far side of the river Tiber, which formed the west boundary of the city. He asked to be crucified upside down, counting himself unworthy to die in the same manner as Christ. He was executed by Emperor Nero around the year 66 at the foot of Vatican Hill. A huge fire had burned for about a week and destroyed over half of Rome. In order to deflect criticism of himself for not dealing properly with the fire, Nero was looking for a scapegoat and chose the Christians. This tells us that the Christian community must have already been quite large. In 318, the Emperor Constantine, having converted to Christianity, started construction of a church at Vatican Hill to mark the spot of St Peter's martyrdom. By the 16th century, the church was falling into ruin, having been sacked by invaders many times. It was decided to build a new church, which is the one we see today. Great care was taken to preserve the spot of the tomb of St Peter, which lies directly under the central altar. One can see down to the tomb from floor level, but a better view can be had from the basement underneath. In the 1940s, excavations revealed several tombs, including the remains of a healthy man in his 60s, whose feet had been pierced, as St Peter's would have been by his crucifixion. It was judged probable that these were indeed the relics of the saint. As for St Paul, he was executed around the same time as Peter, being a Roman citizen, he was afforded the honour of beheading, rather than the more tortuous crucifixion. According to tradition, his body lay beneath the altar of St Paul outside the walls, also built by Emperor Constantine. In 2006, following several years of archaeological study there, a white sarcophagus was found under the altar. It contained remnants of a purple linen cloth, laminated with pure gold. The fragments of bone were carbon dated to the first century. The honour afforded to the burial strongly suggests that it was St Paul. Also discovered in the nearby catacomb of St Thecla was a fresco of St Paul from the 4th century. On the other side of Rome lies the church of St Putentiana which is closely associated with both apostles. It is the oldest place of Christian worship in Rome. It was erected in the middle of the 2nd century, reusing part of the Roman baths. Archaeologists are currently working in the basement of the church. They believe that the Apostle Peter lived there for about seven years. The Roman bishops lived here until the 4th century, when Constantine gave them the Lateran Palace. The mosaic in the apse dates from the 4th century. It is one of the earliest depictions of Christ. We can see St Potenziana placing the crown of martyrdom on one of the apostles, most likely Peter. She was the daughter of St Claudia and Pudens, a Roman senator, who lived in a house on the site. It is thought by some that St Claudia was a daughter of King Caractacus of England. He resisted the Roman invasion for some time until he was eventually captured and brought to Roman chains to be executed. In the event, he gave such a good account of himself that his life was spared. However, the Romans insisted his daughter Claudia stayed in Rome as a hostage to ensure King Caractacus did not start trouble on his return. St Paul's last letter was the epistle to Timothy. It was written from Rome and ends, Eubulus greets you, and so do Prudence, Linus and Claudia, and all the brothers and sisters. 
Linus was one of the first bishops of Rome, from around the year 67, the time of Peter and Paul's martyrdom. He was probably a son of Claudia. Another early bishop of Rome was St Clement. We still have one of his letters addressed from Rome to the Christians at Corinth. It is one of the earliest Christian writings outside the New Testament. He was ordained by the Apostle Peter. Clement was imprisoned by the Emperor Trajan and expelled to the Crimea to work in a stone quarry. He converted many of the pagans there and for his pains was tied to an anchor and thrown from a boat into the Black Sea. His body was recovered and one of the evangelists to the Slavic lands, St Cyril, brought some relics of St Clement to Rome in 869. These are now enshrined in the Church of St Clement. The apse of the main church houses a stunning mosaic from the 12th century. Below the current church one can visit the remains of the 4th century basilica. This was discovered in the late 19th century by the Irish Dominicans who have looked after the building since the 17th century. They came to Rome after Oliver Cromwell's violent persecution of the church in Ireland at that time. The ancient church contains some remarkable frescoes added in the 11th century. The tomb of St Cyril is also there. Another popular saint of Rome is St Cecilia, a noblewoman from the late 2nd century who has become the patron saint of musicians. She was an inspiration to Julian of Norwich, the 14th century English mystic. She was a Christian but was forced to marry a pagan, Valerian. At her wedding she sat apart and sang hymns to God. When the time came to consummate the marriage, she told her husband that an angel was present and that God would punish Valerian if he violated her, but would love him if he respected her virginity. When Valerian asked to see the angel, Cecilia told him he would see it if he was baptised and asked him to seek the sacrament at the hands of Pope Urban I. On receiving baptism, he saw the angel standing beside Cecilia, crowning her with a garland of roses and lilies. Both Valerian and Cecilia were martyred. In 1599, the sculptor Stefano Moderno was commissioned to make a sculpture of St Cecilia which shows the three cuts to her throat. Moderno signed a statement saying the relics were incorrupt and that there was still congealed blood at the site where she was cut. Three attempts were made to cut off her head, the maximum allowed under Roman law. But she lived for three days, during which time she asked Pope Urban to convert her house into a church. The current church is built on the site of the original one. The crypt houses the relics of both Cecilia and Valeria and is famed for its ceiling, covered with angels, reflecting the angel which protected Saint Cecilia. One of the most interesting churches in Rome is that dedicated to Saints Cosmas and Damien. They were twin brothers born in Arabia who were skilled doctors but charged no fees. They were martyred in the Roman province of Syria during the persecutions of Emperor Diocletian in the late 3rd century. They were tortured in an effort to have them deny their faith, but they refused. They were hung on a cross, stoned and shot with arrows, before finally being beheaded. Their relics were taken to Constantinople in the 6th century, by Emperor Justinian, who credited them with healing him and built a church in their honour. Meanwhile, in Rome, Pope Urban VIII converted a pagan temple into the church of Saints Cosmas and Damien. The pagan building had been the temple of Valerius Romulus, who was declared a god by his father, the Emperor Maxentius. 
The building lies right on the Roman Forum. Nearby are the remains of the Temple of Castor and Pollux, the Gemini twins, who were mythical half-brothers. Their mother was Leda, but they had different fathers. Castor's father was a mere mortal, the king of Sparta. Pollux's father was Zeus, who raped Leda in the guise of a swan. In 6th century Rome, despite having been officially Christian for over two centuries, many people still looked to the twins Castor and Pollux for healing. The popes therefore encouraged the cult of Cosmas and Damien in their stead, while emphasising the saints were to be venerated and not worshipped. Worship is due to God alone. The church contains the original mosaics installed in the 6th century. It's remarkable to see how much evidence still exists for the early saints of Rome, dating from the very earliest years of the faith. St Peter, St Paul and all the saints of Rome, pray to God for us.